You know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And, yeah, yeah. Had to look both ways before crossing the street. You, know. you had streets? Yeah, we had streets. Yeah. Um, so we had to uh, go through all that material and understand it and see then investigate in our own mind how the significance of words and how we use words internally generates meaning and how meaning influences consciousness. Huh? And of course, I like to use the example, if you doubt this, just go to sit down in the courthouse during a trial and listen to the different witnesses. Uh, traffic court is good because it's open to the public and there's lots and lots of cases. And, uh, you hear in traffic court, uh, two people describing the same accident. Right? And it sounds like they're talking about two completely different things. Right? I mean, there's the cop up there, you know, with the diagram showing the skid marks and the angle of the street and here's the stop sign and, the, the, you know, all this stuff. And then there's the driver of the car going, well, officer, I mean, I'm on, you're honest, Your Honor. You know, my speedometer was not calibrated. And, you know, are these two guys talking about the same incident? Are they even on the same planet? Well, how is this possible? Huh? How is it possible that the same incident could be described by two different people in completely different terms? Is it because the one person, the, the words mean something different from, to this person than they do to that person? No, the words are always the same. Uh -huh. But the meaning is different because the, people, the two people have two different intentions. They're looking at things in a different way. One is looking from the side of, oh, you're guilty and I'm going to convict you. And the other one is looking for the honest, no, I'm innocent. See? So they're both describing the same thing in completely different terms. Because one is trying to get off and the other one's trying to get, get him convicted. Two different sides, two different points of view. Same thing, different points of view, completely different, divergent. Description. So what this means is that according to your motivation, you will describe things in different terms and you will use the, the words to try to create a different meaning according to your desires. See? So when materialistic people, for example, encounter our, uh, our literature or our practices, or our videos or whatever, you know, and they hear us talking about all this spiritual stuff. Their first inclination is to say, no, it's not possible. These guys must be cheating. Huh? It's impossible, can't be true, must be a lie. They're trying to get one over on us, they're cheating. Huh? Why? Because if they accepted that this was true, they would have to change everything, everything. What they eat, what they do for a living, how, how they sleep, how they go to the bathroom, when they get up in the morning, what, the, what clothes they wear, uh, what they think, what they feel, everything would have to change. Huh? If what we're saying is correct, then it means the world has gone down a long detour into darkness and ignorance. Huh? It has taken a wrong turn a long time back. Huh? And in order to save the world or fix the world or help people or uh, make things better, we would have to change just about everything. See? And then nobody wants to think that. You can't think that. It's not allowed. Huh? I mean, you know, what would that do to next, next quarter's stock price? You know? Really? So people, when they hear what we're talking about, they say, no, no, it's not possible. 
No. What they really mean is, I can't think that. I am not allowed or I am not allowing myself to think that because if I was to think that even for a little while, oh my God, then there would be so many things I would have to like completely change and you know. So they're not they're not gonna go there. They don't they just they wanna stop. Well, we don't really care about those people. So if you're one of those people, just you know, just go away. We don't care. You will go to you, the destination that you're supposed to go to, and it, we're not concerned with that. So, uh, you know, good luck in all your future endeavors. Yeah, alright, well. Then there are the people who say, "Oh, these guys, ah, uh, yeah, they got a good, they got a good con game going, huh?" Boy, people send them money on the internet just for talking about God. Wow, I could do that. Huh? I'm going to study their stuff. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to do this. this I'm going to take do the same con myself. Yeah, this is good stuff. Yeah, look at all those big weights. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So what happens to, to this kind of person? Unless they're very, very, very intelligent, they start to read it and they start going, yeah, yeah, this is great. This is, uh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to believe this, I would have to just give up everything. I'd have to give up being a criminal. Oh man, I can't do that. Yeah. So they go away. That's fine. Bye. Huh? And then there's the people who think, oh, wow, this is so powerful. Spiritual technology. Yeah, this is cool, you know. I can use this to get a new girlfriend and to earn more money. And, uh, you know, I'll get some good karma and then I can enjoy my senses. And ah, I can buy that new house I always wanted. And da 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 da, -da. Huh? Like that, what's that? Spiro, Spiro, Pyrosphere. Yeah, Pyrosphere. <laughs> okay, so they come and then they, they listen to a few tapes and things and then, okay, all you have to do is chant this mantra. Yeah, that's great. And give up meat eating, intoxication, gambling, and illicit sex. <laughs> but that's what I want. Uh, so next thing you know, they're headed for the door. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Uh, so then there's a few people who are so desperate. Uh, they're so hungry. They're so in so much pain. They're, they're so, they have so many problems. They say, I'll try anything. I'll even chant this Hare Krishna mantra. And give up all this meat eating and listen to I'll try anything, please. <laughs> Just let me. So they come and they actually practice it for a while. They actually practice it. And, be, and because this method is so powerful, hmm, they get relief from their problems. Huh? Like we were saying, Vishnu Sahasranam, that's what it does. That's what it's for. That's the purpose of it, is to give you relief from your material problems. So they get the relief from their material problems, and then, bye, they're gone. Okay. Huh? Door's not locked. <laughs> Come on back when you have some time. <laughs> huh? Then there's the other people who are so, so completely broke and so desperate for money that they'll try any kind of woo-woo, you know. They got, you look at their bookshelf at home, they got the secret, you know, think and grow rich. Uh, what are all the classics, you know. Um, the abundance theology, you know. They got all that stuff. Purpose-driven life, you know. It's all sitting on their bookshelf at home. And none of it worked. So finally they come to us. 
<laughs> and they said, they said, I've tried everything. And I'm still broke. What are we going to do? Okay, just chant this mantra. Follow this process. Read these books. Okay. So then they read and they do a little chanting and they do a little process. And then guess what happens? Somehow or other, all of a sudden, they get some money. And then, bye! They're out the door. All right, bye. <laughs> that's fine. We don't mind them leaving. That's, that's okay. That's okay. And then, let's see. Another person, go, oh yeah. Then another person comes and he says, this is very strange. I don't understand this. I'm really smart. And I never met anything that I couldn't, I never came across anything I couldn't understand. I'm going to look into this. 